Hi everyone, this is Eric Vanderwall, and in this part we're going to be looking at the substrate recipes here, which is a great guide to sort of getting started with substrate. Now when I first started with this, I had a little bit of difficulty getting it running myself. There are no instructions here on how to get your nodes running and how to build your binaries and stuff like that. So we're going to go over, you know, from the very basics of getting started. Um, the one thing we're not going to cover here is how to get Rust installed and there are you know are some instructions here on the substrate recipes book which i'll put a link to and how you can do you can see right here so have a working substrate development environment there's some excellent docs on setting up a substrate development environment and they also have some information on how to start rust there so substrate is written in rust and you don't have to be a super rust ninja to follow along here you just it helps if you have a little bit of basics, but even if you don't, I think you should be able to follow along for the most part, as long as you have Rust installed. Now, the next thing you wanna do is make sure that you clone this GitHub here, which has the repository of the recipes. Um, you can do it here from your command line, you can do it from your favorite IDE, you can do it from, um, you know, git crack and whatever you want to do and i've already done this beforehand so you don't have to wait for that and i just have a, a copy of this you know on my um, computer here already and once you have that done you can go ahead and open it up in your ide to have a look so i'm using intellij you could be using visual studio um, or visual studio code or whatever you want to do and so once you have it in your computer, it should look something like this. I've just got mine, you know, here, and you should be able to see the various nodes and the palettes and things like that, and we'll go over that later. But it should look something like this so you know you're in the right place. Now, I do recommend, of course, going through and reading this first to get an idea of Substrate, if you don't already know that, and the Substrate node and the directories here and the kitchen and stuff like that and they will talk about you know different things that are going on but you'll see that once you get to the bottom you go to the next page it's going to jump right into palettes so it doesn't really help you start running it and i know the earlier version did and stuff like that but um you know everyone's busy so it's you know not here right now so what we're going to do that and to do that you need to know some of the cargo commands because cargo is sort of the package manager for rust and we need to use cargo to you know compile and run this right out of the box and again so you can do this directly from your ide depending on what it is so with intellij we just have a terminal down here you can also open up um you know a terminal here like this and so i'm using linux so you can use um, a mac or you could be using linux on windows whatever the case may be but it's pretty much the same now let's just look at a couple of commands about getting this started and you might find this a little bit different than if you're using a node template. If you use a node template from Substrate, um, it only has one binary in it. So you can just do something like type cargo build and it will go ahead and build um, everything. But, you know, for this, it is not going to do exactly what you want because it has a bunch of different binaries in it. And so we need to tell it exactly, you know, what we want to do with those binaries. So if we go cargo build, it's just going to build every single binary, which you can see here. And if we go cargo run, it's not going to work because it's going to ask you, okay, which binary do I need to do? Which binary do I need to run? And so what it's basically asking you is like, which of these nodes do we want to spin up? And we're going to start with just the kitchen node and focus here, but the same basic principles will apply to all the others. And if you do control C, you're going to be able to um, stop your uh, the command from running. So I don't necessarily need to you know run this whole thing again. So we're just going to type cargo run and see what happens. And it's going to give us an error message saying uh, cargo run could not determine which binary to run. Use the dash dash bin option to specify which binary or the default run manifest key. So, and it's gonna tell me which binaries are available. Now, the first time you do this, you, you wanna build everything. So you can type cargo build like I did, and we can do something called, we'll go cargo build, and we're gonna set a flag for this. We're gonna go uh, dash dash, and we're gonna say 
release if I could type and you're gonna ask me okay why would we want to do the release because we're not planning to release this well the two main ways that we use cargo build is we typically do cargo build release and if we do cargo build without release what it's gonna do is run the debug version and the debug version is going to take even longer to run than the release version. So we're only going to do the debug version if we specifically need it. Let's jump back over to the website here. And so here is the uh, cargo documentations. Um, I see this is like an alt site, but you can find the cargo documentation online really easy. And uh, you can just see like a basic synopsis of some of the commands here that, that Cargo does. But for the most part, we just need either Cargo build, which is Cargo will be Cargo space build, which is gonna compile the package, but not necessarily run it. And we can do Cargo run, which is gonna run a binary or the, um, if there's only one, it will just run the default. And if it hasn't been compiled yet, then it will go ahead and compile that. Now, a lot of this also comes with documentation, so you can run the, the cargo doc and it will build the documentation for you. And let's see here. So again, if you're familiar with, with cargo, you and uh, Rust, then you probably already know this, but you can do like dash dash version to see the version, or we could do dash dash list to see the sub commands and stuff like that. And the other most common one is cargo, uh, like run dash dash help. It's gonna show all of your help information. Phew, so that took a little while to build and you're gonna find that the first time that you build everything, it's gonna take a bit. Now what you can do is actually build just the node that you want to use. You're gonna build the binary that you wanna use. And so how we can do that is we're just gonna type cargo build. And this time we're gonna go dash dash bin because we're gonna select the binary that we wanna build. And this one's called kitchen node. We're gonna add another space. I'm gonna go dash dash release because we were, just as we said before, we wanna use the release version instead of the debug version. So we're gonna hit that. And you can see mine finished in 0.33 seconds. Uh, yours is gonna take a lot longer the first time because mine's already done. And Cargo is gonna see that all the dependencies are already there and it's gonna say, okay, you know what? Nothing's changed, so we're good. So that's gonna save me a lot of time. Now, the next thing we wanna do is actually run this node. And to do that, it's very similar. We're gonna type cargo run um, dash dash bin to tell it which one. We're gonna say kitchen node. But now we wanna pass on some more parameters here, some more arguments. And currently everything before this, all of this is basically going into cargo, but we wanna pass some parameters into the kitchen node itself. In order to do that, we're gonna go dash dash and add another space. Now everything after this is gonna be passed to the node itself. And if you're using you know, a Rust binary that's not um, substrate or something, this is just being passed to the main arguments of the program. So here, now we can pass some more arguments. So I'm gonna go dash dash dev, because we're gonna, this is gonna be a development release. And this is not the same as a debug release. This is a development release because it's it knows that this is just for development and it's gonna set it up that way. And I'm not sure if this has changed or not. I, I would have to look it up. But um, in the past, I think if you only had one node running, it wasn't gonna create any blocks necessarily. There's gonna be issue creating blocks um, because there would be no consensus. I'm not sure how that works. If anyone wants to hit me up in the comments, go for it. But we're gonna go dash dash dev to to run the development version. We're also gonna go dash dash temp, T-M-P. And what this is gonna do is it's not gonna save um, the information of the uh, blockchain. Like for example, it's not gonna save the Genesis block and things like that, or the um, any of the other data that we put into storage because we wanna keep it clean. So next time I go back and I, I do something, I want all that data to be gone. And just by throwing it into a temp file here, automatically it's gonna save a lot of headaches down the road of being like, okay, why did that happen? So now let's just push enter and cross our fingers that I didn't miss anything. And there we go. Now you can see here, we got a little a lot of squiggly wigglies that don't show up very well in these, oh, cat's just jumping on me here. A lot of squiggly wigglies that don't necessarily show up in the IntelliJ very well. They uh, usually do show up very well in the uh, command line. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go control C to shut this down properly. We don't wanna just close it if we don't have to. 
Okay, after some finding with my terminal, let's go ahead and run this again. We're gonna say cargo run back dash dash bin kitchen node uh, dash dash. Then we're gonna say dash dash dev dash dash um, temp. Okay, so this is what it should look like. Let's try and full screen this a bit. And if you, you know, just read through this a little bit here, you're going to see the versions. So we're running, uh, you know, version three, we're running on Linux, you know, it's going to give you the uh, Substrate Developers Hub, the chain specification of the development. Uh, it gives it a name. It's going to randomly generate a name for your node here, a role as authority. It's created a database for us in a temp folder automatically, which is super nice. It's going to tell us its native runtime which you should read a little bit about this on the recipe section. So this is the super runtime. It's initialized the Genesis block state. So this is the very first block. And, uh, you know, it's just going to go on from there. And once that happens, it's just going to go into idle here because there is um, no blocks being made because no uh, transactions are happening. So we'll talk about that in another part. So if you have any questions, go ahead and shoot them into the um, comment section. And I also put a link over to the um, forum or chat section that the Substrate developers use. So you can go over there too if you have some questions. People are really friendly and hopefully someone can help you out. Okay, until the next part, this is Eric Vanderwall.